Muito obrigado. So this morning we talk about uh, mid-flexion balancing in total knee arthroplasty, which is uh, not a very easy uh, topic, in fact. And uh, we have to say that um, ah, uh, we have to, to know what are the challenging challenges when you uh, start to do a total knee uh, arthroplasty. The first is definitely to keep an equal balance between extension and flexion to get a good stability while you're walking, while you go up and downstairs. And uh, of course, the patellofemoral joint is so important. You, keep, uh, you need to keep the patella height, the respect the joint level. And uh, while you're doing that, probably you will improve the patellofemoral tracking and the femoral, uh, femoral tibial uh, kinematic. This is the goal. What do we know about that? First of all, we probably uh, all agree about the way to uh, do the tibia, the tibial cut, uh, which would be probably 90 degrees uh, uh, compared to the anatomical uh, axis. What is more critical is the femoral component, to know how to size it, how to align it, and uh, which rotation you should, uh, you should propose to uh, this component, because this will have a big and a huge importance in uh, the, uh, the flexion gap and the, the way you uh, have a good balancing, especially in mid-flexion. And uh, any mistake, any uh, asymmetric in the flexion gap will uh, create some laxities and some uh, discomfort for the patients. About the literature, we have uh, some uh, studies, but not so much, uh, not so many studies about that. And um, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's, it's coming on the podium that uh, if you use a kinematic alignment, for example, you will improve your patient. But it's, it's, it, it needs to be, uh, to be uh, discussed. So the actual debate, and this is uh, what we see uh, in the meetings, is uh, the old fashion to do a total knee arthroplasty with the mechanical alignment and the new fashion doing some kinematic alignment. And you have some uh, advantages uh, and some disadvantages for sure. When you uh, do the mechanical uh, alignment, which is the common way to, uh, to do a total knee uh, uh, arthroplasty, you uh, will uh, be able to uh, get some good balancing, but in case of, of huge deformity, sometimes you, do, you need to do some extensive release, and uh, sometimes you can get some uh, laxities. When you do kinematic alignment, you should be much more anatomic, you should put the total knee just in between all the ligaments and uh, everything will go well. But it's not so easy and probably you need to have some uh, specific implants and sometimes it's over the limits definitely. The fight uh, started a long time ago in fact between Angerford who uh, wanted to keep the obliquity of the uh, joint line and uh, in Seoul where uh, he was uh, fighting to uh, uh, do some uh, orthogonal cuts in the femur and in the tibia. This is the technique we use. So the coronal uh, orthogonal cuts may lead to uh, some uh, um, problems uh, while you are going to flexion. And this is where maybe you can have some problem in mid-flexion balancing because uh, you do your orthogonal cuts, it will be perfect, but when you go to flexion, especially if you have a big virus of valgus deformity, you could have some uh, problem in balancing your, um, your uh, total knee. So that's why people and the surgeons come up with the fact that sometimes you need to do some external rotation and uh, adapt the posterior femoral cut to, uh, to, the, to, the, to the femur. But what is important is to know where the deformity is coming from. Because if you have only a wear deformity due to arthritis, no uh, big uh, virus or valgus uh, deformity, you can reduce it when you do the clinical exam. And the total knee uh, shouldn't be uh, too much a problem and the balancing should be uh, pretty uh, easy. It's a little bit different when you have uh, some uh, 
were deformity plus a constitutional deformity with uh, big values or big values because you will get some very uh, uh, asymmetric uh, cuts. And when you do your clinical exam or where you uh, see your patient walking, you will see some uh, asymmetrical uh, varus or valgus uh, thrust, and you will uh, not be able to reduce it when you do the, 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 the testing. So this leads to some uh, retraction, distension, and needs some releases, definitely, to, uh, to, 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 to get a, a good balancing. So if you use a mechanical alignment uh, and you do some orthogonal cuts like that, you uh, will be too tight, uh, especially in the uh, con uh, con concavity. So you need to do some uh, releases, but sometimes uh, if you uh, do some uh, orthogonal cuts, you could get some resection laxities because you had to cut more to uh, get a, a, a well um, aligned total knee. So this might be a problem. So the balancing in uh, flexion, where you have a varus, um, to compensate the resection laxity and to protect from your resection laxity, would be definitely to do some deep MCL release. And this should be nearly systematic, and you, go, you can go very posterior. And if it's not enough, you can go even posterior and do a semi-membranosus cut, which is pretty uh, efficient. It's also efficient in terms of uh, flexum deformity. And if it's not enough, you have to go to uh, the superficial MCL and some, to do some pie crusting, which will uh, allow you to get a progressive uh, lengthening of your medial uh, of your MCL. Be careful of the superficial uh, MC, uh, uh, LCM release because if you get a laxity, you can get a, a terrific laxity, which could be really uh, dangerous. On the valgus, uh, on the other side, it's a little bit more tricky and a little bit more difficult. And um, the best way to avoid any uh, trouble in that balancing is to use the lateral approach and you will detach the fascia lata and the tibialis anterior as a digastric muscle. And this will allow you to uh, uh, get a pretty nice uh, balancing without touching LCL or popliteus. And I would say that it's better not to uh, touch LCL or popliteus because as soon as you do that, you could get some huge laxity, especially in uh, flexion. And the mid-flexion balancing would be uh, very tough to, uh, to adapt. So uh, while you have done the ligaments, you have to look at the rotation, the rotation of your, uh, of your um, femoral component. And there is definitely a discussion, and uh, a discussion also in the way that well you, while you do some external rotation, you could change and you can have some problem in sizing your femoral component. So um, while you, uh, you do this, uh, you uh, will have a different option uh, to uh, do some rotation. The first is, is to do no rotation, and you do a, a standard cut, no rotation, but you could be in trouble <coughs> in uh, balancing. The second is to use the transepicondylar axis, and you cut uh, parallel to the transepicondylar axis. And you have then two other options which are really interesting. The first is uh, to, uh, to um, uh, do not touch the lateral uh, condyle, the, keep the same size, but to do an over correction on the medial side. So if you have a tight, a tight medial compartment, you will be able to uh, not do too much releases and uh, to um, have a, a good balance. And in case of uh, valgus, for example, you can uh, keep the same uh, amount of resection on the medial side, but under resect on the lateral side. And this has, uh, the, these uh, two options are really interesting. The first, uh, the, where, where you do a medial condyle over resection, it means that you put some, uh, extern uh, some external rotation use, using the center of your tools, and it's a centered rotation. So 
you will uh, reject more on the mid hole and less on the large hole. And this is very good in, in case of mid hole arthritis, especially if you have a big uh, various uh, deformity, and uh, you will get a good balance in, uh, in uh, flexion. The problem is uh, to get a mid hole uh, instability in flexion, especially if you have uh, some uh, lateral osteoarthritis. So, so it's definitely not the good option in uh, lateral arthritis and the good option for medial arthritis. Decrease the lateral condyle resection would be much more adapted to uh, the lateral osteoarthritis, uh, to uh, the patient who had uh, a previous total knee, uh, 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 some uh, osteotomy, HTO. And um, this is very good because you will uh, not get any medial, uh, medial uh, in instability. But if you do that, you can oversize your, uh, your femoral component because as you turn it, the, uh, the, uh, the AP uh, length will change. So be careful about that and uh, uh, check very carefully the AP, uh, the AP translation, the, the AP measurement. So while you have done all those uh, uh, balancing, you, uh, uh, while you do the, uh, the, the balancing on the medial and the lateral side, you can have and get a relative limb uh, lengthening. And this could also lead to uh, some patellofemoral problem. And you can get uh, patella infera, especially if you have to uh, compensate the, the, laxi the, the laxity you have in, uh, in extension, while you will increase the polyethylene uh, thickness, you will change the joint line level. So uh, what we propose and what we use uh, since uh, ever, I would say, it's to uh, use some dependent cuts uh, and to do a distalization of your femoral cut. So you have done your gap balancing inflection and uh, this is uh, stable, and then you finish by the distal cut. It means that you will uh, distalize the distal cut uh, with, uh, this, uh, with a tensor, and you need to have a tensor, uh, in extension. So you will change the femoral part, but not the tibial part. It means that you will never change the patella height and if your patella has a, a perfect height, no patella inferior or no patella anta, you will increase the power of your quadriceps and also you will control better the, uh, the, the, the flexion uh, and the, 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 the flexion l l laxity. So this is what uh, we propose. Uh, if you use the standard solution, uh, where, where you do some independent cuts, uh, you compensate uh, a, a laxity in extension or inflection with increasing the polyethylene thickness. While you have a tensor, you can distalize the femoral cut and then you can uh, keep the same uh, polyethylene thickness, nine millimeter, the, the, the amount of uh, bone you have reject, and uh, you will keep a normal patella height. So I would say that uh, you always need to look at the joint line if you want to have a, a good balancing in flexion and in extension. And I will tell you that when you start the, to do your total knee, keep the medial meniscus or the lateral meniscus, mark it, and check every time, every step you're doing, uh, that you respect this uh, joint line. In flexion, this is the meniscus level, and in extension, this is the meniscus level. And if you respect the joint line, you will definitely uh, uh, be probably uh, good in uh, balancing your total knee. Then you also need to understand which total knee you are using because the way uh, you have a, a posture stabilized or not, total knee will change uh, the, uh, the, the, the way your knee is uh, stable in flexion. So you have some cam, you have some different uh, options. We use the third condyle, which is a, a pretty nice op option in the way that uh, uh, you will get uh, a contact between the femur and the tibia uh, since uh, 35 degrees, and this will uh, allow us and, uh, uh, to have a, uh, like a rollback, and this rollback will uh, compensate and make 
your um, quadriceps uh, uh, function much more efficient, especially when you go up and downstairs or when you arise from a chair. This uh, option is also interesting in the way that you will have three points and uh, on the medial, central, and the lateral. So it will be really stable, uh, especially in uh, inflection. So this is uh, important to look at which total knee you're using, the design of your total knee, and um, what, uh, what, what the companies are proposing to you. So <clears throat> as a conclusion, we can say that the, ba the, the ligament balancing and the bone cuts are related uh, and the mechanical or the kinematic alignment is uh, probably uh, not a true uh, fight or a true war. The dependent cuts uh, are pretty interesting while you use a tensor. The rotation has to be adapted to the deformity and the femoral sh sh shape and the, uh, we think that uh, starting with the tibia first, then you do the flexion gap balancing will allow you to uh, uh, adapt the uh, extension gap balancing with this uh, tensor. And don't forget to also balance your uh, patellofemoral joint. So the conclusion is also to anticipate what you are doing with the clinical exam, with the ligament status and the antecedent. Look at the x-rays. Sometimes you can do some stress x-rays also to understand better the status of your uh, uh, ligament and restore the joint line. Muito obrigado.